What's up, people? Welcome to the Naked Ego Podcast. This is a platform where men and women are willing to strip down their ego and be authentic and vulnerable while they share their stories. My name is Cassandra Bill. I'm your host. Ed Godiambo, your co-host. And uh, Christina Nyango. A.K.A. Tintin. Yes. A.K.A. Tintin. <laughs> are you with us again? Welcome back, back to the podcast. Thank She's you. She's back. She's uh, back. Uh, Naked Ego really, really appreciates you. You are a friend of Naked Ego, so this is your second home. Thank you can you. come in uh, anytime. Anytime you feel you feel like you have a burning urge to share about any experience, any topic. Thank Welcome you. back. Thank you. And today, uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, actually, I don't know about today's, today's topic. topic. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, This is just inspired by a podcast I listened to. I listened to, mm-hmm. um, and I was just—it it gave me the in, inspiration to talk about moments we've not felt like we were enough, and then what we can do to feel like you uh, or you—you know—you are or can be enough, you know. Mm. So it's just a way to have a vulnerable conversation with you guys. Because uh, I liked the, the 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 podcast episode we did, the three of us. Mm-hmm. That was a really nice one, you know. So I was like, okay, let's let me try and come up with something that gets us to go a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. And also, it will be a podcast that will have us getting to know each other. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your guys, I want to get to know. So mm-hmm. ways of getting to know uh, you or you guys to also getting to know me is through an episode like this. Holy moly! <laughs> You go pesan. This one is gonna be juicy. Okay, no. Um, I'm ready. I'm You're ready. ready for it. Yes. Tintin. Yes, I am. Okay, okay. take it away. <laughs> so we'll start off with um, when. When was the last time either of you cried? Okay, she's okay. looking at me. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the last time I cried, Mm. um, so long ago, um, is it 2018 or 2019 Mm. when I was in a toxic relationship? Mm. Yeah, I think it's 2019, Mm. either of those years. I can't remember exactly, Mm. but, um, we were having an argument, Mm. me and, uh, my current girlfriend at that time, Mm. and we kept uh, having a back and forth about this one thing mm. uh, i remember i took i took my time to really research and do some background checks to really package myself in terms of how do i deliver this how do i pass this message to her mm-hmm. because i knew the relationship was toxic mm. and with toxic relationship communication is one of the biggest uh, issues, issues yeah. so i had taken a lot of time during the day at that time i didn't have a job so mm. at home, I researched, I read a lot, uh, I watched something. So I knew for me to get her to understand my point of view, I actually just wanted her to get my point of view. Uh, I remember I went through the script, played everything the way I had planned, did everything possible. And then at the end, I just felt like everything I'd done just hit a wall. And the response that I got from her was the same, same old response that I've been hearing for as long as I can remember I being in that relationship. Mm. And I was like, what? I just broke down and started crying. And then it was so funny when I was crying, she was like, why? It, it caught her by a surpri- surprise. Uh-huh. Why are you crying? So she came, she hugged me. Like, oh, yes. It's like, it's like, it was a funny moment to her. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that's the last time I remember myself crying. Okay. Yeah. Tintin? Happy cry or bad cry? What is, We're talking about what, what is happy there's cry? There's a happy cry. You're watching a movie and, and the tears come. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, anyway. Does that count? No. What, happy crying? Hmm. Um, I mean, tears of joy are a thing. Yes. Tears of joy are a thing. Hmm. Um, so but you could give both for this tears one. of joy and tears also joy. the one, also the one for the tears of joy, the ugly not, crying. Let it not be a movie, oh. please. Give us even the ugly crying, because see, that's the, the one ag- that will get us to know the who ugly you are. Crying, the ugly crying. It was last month, if I'm not wrong. Okay. I had I had not argued with a friend. I I was telling my friend 
what I felt. And the response was, okay. I wasn't expecting the response to be what I wanted, but I was expecting a response whereby they would understand whatever I'm trying to say. And it wasn't like that. So um, I was trying to get myself out of that situation where I, I don't exactly feel as bad as I felt. It, it was like a friendship breakup. Let me, let me put mm. it that way. Mm. So uh, what made me feel whatever I felt was the fact that you invest a lot of time in friendships. You cultivate friendships that can help you grow and be a better version of yourself. But what you're putting in is not what you're getting. And where I am in life, I don't want to settle for less that I, than what I'm giving. Mm -hmm. if, if we are friends and we want to grow, you either pour in the same capacity or more, mm -hmm. such that it will challenge me to pour in more of myself. But that wasn't the case. So yeah, you cry and find ways of letting go pole letting pole. Go and, uh, can, I, can I say something about the pouring bit mm -hmm. the friendship? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes um, they, whoever the friends are, mm -hmm. might not be pouring into your cup in equal measure that you are pouring onto them, but mm. they need to pour to a level that you feel like you deserve. Yes. yes. It and doesn't need to be an apple for an apple when it comes to friendships. Yes. It's something sufficient for, yes. the, for you to feel that, okay, yes. with what I'm pouring, I'm pouring something and they're pouring something back. Mm -hmm. There's an effort. You know? There's and an effort being yes. made. Yes, and yeah. that wasn't being reciprocated. Okay. Because my, my view of friendships is, um, even if you can't reach my level, mm. we are grown-ups. Talk to me about it. Mm. Tell me, Christine, Indio Kenyaneza kakupatia. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's up to mm -hmm. me to accept or reject it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I'll work with whatever you're giving. Yeah. Accept, reject, work with it yes. or learn or yeah. teach. Yes. And some, people, some people need to just be taught. Yeah. Yes. Been, they've never been in that situation. But I came to find out that um, mm -hmm. people are not willing to look within themselves and come to you with how they are. They're mm -hmm. not willing to be naked and come to you and tell you, Christine... This is what I felt. This is how I can show you that. This is how I feel towards you as a friend and what I can bring to the table. Why, why do you think that is the case? I don't uh, know. Maybe uh, my, someone my is also, uh, everyone is going through something in their lives. But, so but if you see, okay, it's true. Um, we as individuals mm -hmm. uh, in life, we're always going through something. something. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like with any, even like, let's say an asset like a car. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always just at a certain percentage. Mm -hmm. It's never a hundred percent. As long as it has been driven out of the dealership, yeah. there, there is, it, it depreciates mm -hmm. you know, somehow. And now you have to do the thing or the things that needs to be done to sort of put it, uh, to, to maintain it to mm -hmm. spec or something mm -hmm. close to spec. Mm -hmm. um, you going through a thing and me going through a thing. That is the common thing that we have mm -hmm. and will, I believe, forever be the case. Even if we c come from countries like, uh, they say like countries like Denmark and Netherlands, guys are like somewhat, somewhat more happier than, you know, in other countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Than in Nairobi. So <laughs> than in Nairobi, for example. Yeah. But they, those guys still go through yeah. something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why do you think, regardless of me going through, like me going through a thing, should not be the only reason why I can't tell you, I can't express myself to you. I can't be vulnerable with you. I can't be honest and authentic with you. But I have to project. But it's very easy for me mm -hmm. to project, <coughs> to lash out, mm -hmm. to uh, be defensive whenever you, you know, are saying about something. So, I don't know. It's something I'm still figuring out, but mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, I know we're all going through a thing, mm -hmm. wow. you know? Um, so like, let's say Nairobi, COVID uh, being a thing, people losing jobs, people uh, mm -hmm. being cut out of business. There's uh, the inflation that we're going through right now in our mm -hmm. economy, um, fuel shortage, corruption, uh, 
high taxation. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as, now those things impact yes. our personal lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um when when I see it like with our folks back in the day, our grandparents as well. There's a lot of community living back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? And I feel like when our generation started coming up, uh, and our parents now are raising us, mm. there's a lot of uh, isolatedness. It's pambana na hali yako, na yangu. And it's like if Tintin is going to tell me about some issue she's having mm-hmm. or she's going through, it's, oh, man, I don't feel like dealing with this. I don't want to deal with this. I only want people who are going to pour happy vibes. Yeah. You know? uh-huh. I just want positive, I'm all about positive vibes. Positive only. vibes day. But it's not, it's not, it's, n- it's, it's not positive it's, vibes every day. Yes, it's not positive vibes every day. And what I expected from my friend is when it's not positive, am I someone that you can come to? When I notice that you're not a hundred and I tell you, would you actually open up to me? Because a friendship to grow, we have to be there through good and bad times. Mm-hmm. So if, if you only need me for the good and I notice the bad and you don't tell me, then what exactly is my purpose in your life? Because I want to be of purpose to someone that I love. And if I'm not of purpose to you and I see my purpose in your, in your life is not fulfilling whatever it should fulfill for this friendship to grow. Mm. And I come to you and tell you, this is what I'm seeing. Mm. I evaluate the friendship and tell you, this is, we missed the mark here and yeah. this is what we need to work on. And you don't do what you're supposed to. How are we supposed to move forward? That is what was making me feel bad about the friendship because yeah. when I when I evaluate, it doesn't necessarily mean that something is wrong. No. Yes. No. It's just ways of improving. Yeah. Just a, how you yes. can align. But the response that you get is that why does it have why why do you ask these questions? Mm. Is something wrong? But when you explain that there's nothing wrong, we just need to improve the friendship. You don't get the response that is needed for you to grow. No, you don't. You don't. Uh, Please allow me to jump in. You yeah. you had queried uh, why do people hold back and they don't want to open up? Yeah, and then we, yes. we, we just resolve to, or we resort to everyone is going through a thing. Mm-hmm. Everyone is facing yeah. some sort of challenge. But I'm like, but that's, that's an obvious. You uh, know, it's, it's the unsaid thing that we are, that is common amongst us. So, For me, I will just like to add something vulnerability is like being naked in front of somebody yes and uh growing up we come from different uh, different environments we are exposed to different settings different uh, seasons and all that Mm. and sometimes those seasons influence what we end up to be and they influence how we think how we respond to certain things Mm. Let's say, for example, vulnerability was practiced in the past and it was never appreciated or probably it was used against me. Mm-hmm. Me being a human being and my brain functioning uh, at a normal level, my brain will always try to mm. discourage me to go back to that vulnerability. Why? Mm. Because there's a pain point. There's a trauma involved. Now, going forward, I'll always try to protect myself and I'll only give in quantities that I feel like you they can, can, you yes, can control. Mm-hmm. I can control mm-hmm. and they can't be used against me. So there is also, there is trauma involved and trauma involves healing. And when you heal, you start something over again afresh. And it doesn't guarantee you that it will be a walk in the park. It no. doesn't mean that when you try the second time, it will work out. So you might try it the second time and then it it's, used, it's used against yes, you again yeah, and then yeah. there's a pain point. Mm. Uh, are you willing to go through that cycle over, over and mm-hmm. over again for the people that you care? Which is something that we rarely are. We are That's not true. ready to go through mm-hmm. that. That's true. Thing. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe for now, let's take a break. Then we, we, I will now give you my story of when the last time I cried. This what that is... Was like. The Naked Ego Podcast. Yeah. This episode has been brought to you by Bureau Time. Bureau Time designs ergonomic, pioneer, and environmentalist office furniture, which is the bees for attractive, productive, creative, and functional working places.
Welcome back to the Naked Ego podcast. Uh, we were talking about when was the last time you ever cried? That was the last time you cried. Yeah, so uh, Yeah, for me, it was in January this year. Uh, one of my one of my best friends lost her mom. Um, and I mean, she's she was a lady we knew, we interacted with, uh, we did a lot with uh, with her and her kids. Mm-hmm. So, and there's also very many ways she supported us. So that loss was difficult, but I think I was due for a cry. Generally, mm-hmm. I was due for a cry. That 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 situation just gave me the opportunity to cry because I usually have a very strange. <laughs> a situation where I I feel like I want to cry mm-hmm. and the tears will get up till just under the eyelids and then they just go down. Like I feel them come up and they're about to come out and then they go down. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm like, I'm emotional about that, you know, whatever it is that I'm facing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I say I was due for a cry because I mean, so much has been happening um, like at home, for example. Uh, financial situation has been difficult. Mm-hmm. And then not having employment, uh, coming from a place where I had to shut down businesses I was running. Uh, and so that means no income. Hmm. You're dependent on your folks. Um, then there's also now just my past stuff, my past traumas that I've gone through. And I don't know where to take them. Uh, yes, I have friends. But sometimes I think I also get to points where I get ti- I, I feel like even if my friends don't tell me, mm. but I get tired of being the guy who a lot of the time has what they seem like a sad story to always give. Mm. But you see, my reality is my reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. My reality is my reality. That's, I wake up in that mess, I sleep in that mess. Yeah. That's what my reality is. You, you can't know? flip it with a button. I, I wish I could. No, you, you can't. Know? Yeah. Things like, oh, Edgar, you should just move out of the house. And I'm like, yeah, I wish, I, if I had the money, I yes, would leave, yeah. but I don't have. Yeah. Yes, I have my own space in the servants quarter. Yeah. Uh but it's still it's still lonely. It's yes. still very daunting because I have a lot of time on my hands. Yeah. Um so it's it's uh panicking about covid, um panicking about mortality because mm-hmm. now it gets it also go to situations where every other week you're hearing about someone who's passed away yeah. as well. So that was also very And somebody daunting. close daunting and then now you don't have a job um yes it's not it's not advisable to compare your situation with that of others Mm -hmm. but in life it happens it happens you know you look at and i think it the comparison comes with some attachment of our goals Mm -hmm. our dreams so you look at you know let's say tintin doing a thing or has Mm -hmm. gone somewhere and i'm like yo but i've I've been dreaming about going to coast and I'm seeing Tintin there living her best life. I'm not I'm not angry at Tintin for living her best life, mm-hmm. but I I'm like, wow, I would like to be on that beach. I'd like to be in that hotel. I'd, you know, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So it was loaded. It was a loaded moment. That loss mm-hmm. came with um a moment where I was feeling very I was feeling down about my life yeah. and the things that I've gone through and replaying them in my mind a lot. Mm-hmm just didn't help so that loss came and i i broke down my guy like it was it was an ugly cry uh, uh, at the hospital when we just got the news because mm. we, we were there when it happened and ah uh, mm. it was such a a tough time man but the tears needed to come out somehow so they did uh, what i can add on that is uh, i don't think we can exist without comparing ourselves to other people Go on, compare yourself to other people, but don't uh, get to a point where you're using that comparison to um, bring yourself down mentally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You let can compare yourself to maybe help yourself see things. Let, let it used to be, let it be that thing that maybe incites you to see different things. Mm-hmm. But don't, don't hang on to that piece of information like it's do or die. Then I think then it's also where friendships now come in. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I could, now the thing we're talking about before, where I could come and tell you and you could notice, I could tell you about what I'm going through yeah. and you can, you, you do realize that I'm maybe spiraling in the 
comparison mm-hmm. and yeah. then you can be like no Edgar I've noticed this is happening and um maybe let's look at it from another angle mm-hmm. uh maybe let's not go down that direction because telling someone not to go down the direction of comparison mm-hmm. that's just telling them mm-hmm. but maybe they don't know how to do it mm-hmm. yeah you know so it's like okay let's can I distract you from that sort of situation and think mm-hmm. about something else and then we see yeah yeah I have another question for you guys. Mm-hmm. When is the last time either of you felt like you weren't enough? We felt like we were not enough. Yes. Uh, is it just a feeling of enough or what is enough though? So to you what is enough? Like just you you felt like you weren't up to par with either a situation in your life um or where you are currently you know did something specific happen and you're just like wow i didn't feel like i was enough there you know so we're in this conversation about vulnerability mm-hmm. when this conversation about healing um talking about our traumas mm-hmm. um and and doing better yeah so maybe we have a picture of what better looks like for each one of us mm-hmm. Yeah. Now in your attempt to be that better person, is there a time you felt like you were you just didn't quite get there? For me personally, yes. Mm-hmm. Um it was in 2016. Talk a bit louder. It was in 2016, mm-hmm. sorry. Um anything that you could think of happened. Mm. I lost my job. I couldn't pay school fees. I couldn't even buy my kid basic things like mm. shoes. Um I couldn't pay rent. Debts were all over the place. Mm. And it was because I was in a relationship that things happened mm. as in it just wasn't working. Mm. So when whatever happened happened, um I didn't want to go back home. I wanted to stick it out first because in my head this was my thinking I'm mm. the first born I should be able to do this on my own I've been doing so many other things by myself so yeah. why can't I handle this um I didn't want to go back home because I was the first born and also I wanted to prove to myself that I can come back up from this yes mm. so the more I tried to do it by myself the worse it became uh i moved in with a friend mm. that also didn't work out so i had to go back home and when i went back home i went back negative as in when i moved out of home i moved out when i had nilikuwa nimejipanga but when i went back home it was just me my boy and my clothes mm. so you have to start from there from negative you have debts to pay um you have people out here who had a perception of you and now think that this is who Christine is alinidanganya akona hii na hii yangu lakini saa saa hii ashiki simu as in i could not i i didn't even have a phone kwanza hapo i was using a kabambe at that point in time mm. when someone calls you nikelele and you're like you don't even have the heart to explain your situation because they don't understand how anona Christina li akona hii yangu so anafaa kwa kinilipa or do something about it mm. i don't i don't have a job so i'm like my kid needs to go to school i need to help at home yeah so something came along the way it wasn't what i expected but it helped i won't i would not say that financially i'm there where i was or better mm. but i'm trying Um as for friends the people who I thought were my friends back then mm. were not there ile kwa ah si tulijua ya Christine tafanyika hivi na hivi na hivi Christine alikuwa na ringa and it gave me a different perspective of life welcome, that's when that's welcome when, to Nairobi <laughs> that's when I learned uh, <laughs> Nairobi. not everyone is your friend no, yeah, and then yeah. I also came to understand when my mom said you should learn the people you associate with you should learn them and yeah, when she tells you that person is not good there's a reason why she's telling you hata kama hajamjua 
So these days, what I do these days is I choose, I choose who I associate with. Okay. Um, I've learned that it's not always black and white. There are gray areas in life, and you can't put a blanket judgment on certain things. You have to come from a point of understanding because you don't know someone's situation. Because back then in 2016, you make choices based on your situation, your current situation. It's either ununuli mtoto viatu ama ulipedeni. And I won't pay a debt. I'll, I'll definitely buy something for my kid. Yeah. So you, when you're in tough situations, look for people who can who can just listen. They don't have to help you financially. Sometimes it feels good to unburden yourself when you actually talk it out. Mm. You don't have to have a solution to everything. But the fact that someone is listening to you will bring that sense of relief. Mm. I've also learned to be patient with myself. Okay. And not um, put so much pressure on myself when things are not working out because... The world is already hard. So. <laughs> art is hard. Yes, art is art hard. Is hard. Art so, is hard. Ukijiongeza pressure on yeah. top of the normal pressures of life. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that is where we are, and we are finding we are we are we are, we are healing. We're healing. Yes, as as much as we are confused sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. For uh, for me, I might not be able to paint the picture in detail okay. because I'm still in that environment, mm-hmm. and, and I have thing. a relationship with these people yes. that I'm kind of also working on. Um, for me, it's been it's been a journey ever since my accident. My accident happened when. I was flying yeah, high, the top, yeah. and then after the accident, go to the peak, and then shit Came went down, down yeah. and now I uh, started figuring myself, and now I started digging myself. Now, it, it's when, right now, I'm getting to those points where I'm beginning to feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Comfortable in the sense that I'm not worrying too much Maybe with the finances, mm. with the people, like you're, I'm beginning to settle in. Mm. And now that comes with uh, you are, you're now exposed to spaces that uh, you haven't been there for quite some long, uh, quite a long time. Mm. You are um, interacting with people who, quote unquote, they've made it in life. Uh, people who have stable jobs. Uh, they have from the from the from our society's eye, they've made it, yeah, and uh, that is proving to be quite a challenge for me because it comes with these people. There's a way they measure if you're enough. Yeah, it comes with uh, the type of job that you have, um, the type of car that you drive. Mm. Uh, you're making noise. Make, you're making noise. Mm. Uh, sorry. So, okay. uh, f- these people, there's a certain way that they get to measure if you are enough. Mm. So, it comes with the type of job that you have, mm. uh, the type of car that you drive, right, right. Uh, the type of neighborhood that mm-hmm. you, you live in. Uh, yes, even just how you dress uh, and all that, uh, the type of... Um, food that you order when you go to a restaurant mm. Uh, mm. why are you not drinking alcohol is it because you can't pay uh, and so on and so forth mm. um, <laughs> so I'm in a phase where uh, every now and then I kind of feel like I'm not enough okay yeah because uh, it's 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 a stage I'm doing business with these people yeah there is something they're putting uh, they're pouring in, in in my cup yeah just the fact that they have a sense of toxicity and toxic masculinity, uh, it's, not, it's not a blanket thing in their life. Uh-huh. There is just how they measure people in certain environments. So, okay. yeah. Um, for me, I'm trying to see how I'll, I'll, exp- I'll express this. Uh, I find like a lot of the time I don't... I don't feel like I'm enough. 
mm-hmm. a lot of the time in my just my general life mm-hmm. uh, i don't know if it's because of my circumstances uh but like my circumstances have always they've been never ending or mm. what it feels like never ending yeah and ever since i was 10 it's always been one thing after another after another and now mm. i'm 34 so mm. this is like you know you're not catching up 20 break. years and i'm like i'm not catching a break yeah you know so uh it's been one thing after another growing up and me asking god when does it stop mm-hmm. when when does when do the tables turn so that i can start enjoying these things that i envision these things that i i love that i dream about so to now be specific so that i don't look like i'm just being vague uh for example like in my friendships i don't feel like i'm enough the reason why i don't feel like i'm enough like in the very in the in the in the immediate circle that i hang out with a lot more often i'm the only person who doesn't have a job mm-hmm. i i have Uh, in that immediate circle i think it's only one person who i have expressed expressively told this to mm-hmm. you know where like i don't feel like i'm enough when i'm with you guys mm-hmm. they are they're very good individuals yeah you know um none of us are perfect mm-hmm. but they're good individuals and i love them yeah but a lot of the time when i hang out with them i don't feel like i'm enough and i've realized that because of that or well, because of that situation it has sort of silenced me a bit when i'm around them ah so now i don't talk as much because i'm in my head mm-hmm. yeah wondering you know why like damn i'm not i'm not where this guy is yeah i'm not where this lady is what are they thinking when i say such what are thing? they um i feel like sometimes i don't have anything to contribute mm-hmm. uh, because people are talking about investments people are talking about their work uh. the experiences at their offices or mm-hmm. their work or their work from home situations uh. um or the businesses that they're running and i don't have that kind of story like i can't say uh. wow i've had a long week but my colleague my guy my boss i don't <laughs> have those kind of stories yeah i'm most time at home i'm at home i'm, I'm not working now so i'm i'm at home and yeah. i don't have much to say you know yes then also uh my earning power is not like theirs yes yeah even if they're earning 30k a month yes that's something that they're getting in their in their yeah. pockets that mm. i don't constantly get yes now it reminds me of my situation mm. where sometimes me and my dad uh, i don't think we even had the conversation like with these friends of mine per se but they give a specific situation where like my dad can get like 10 g's in his hands mm. and with the three of us mm. Mm that's him my mom and myself because my sister doesn't my sister doesn't live at home she's in another county mm. and we have to figure out how to split this three this this 10000 mm. amongst three people and somehow survive that that week for example yeah like that's where like our lev- the level of our finances have gotten to for example yes and then i feel like crap because i'm like damn yeah i don't even have the job to be able to now pour into this house mm-hmm. And then I feel like damn man I feel like a failure I feel like I'm yeah. not contributing and then I feel was about and then I don't know who to talk about that with because like in our family we don't we don't have those kind of conversations, yeah, conversations you know so that's yeah. like for the friendship thing you know where I feel like I'm not enough and I'm like I feel like I'm not contributing so I've silenced a lot of myself and I'm in my head a lot thinking and thinking and thinking and calculating and I'm, so I'm, most of the time I'm not very settled yeah and i don't know what to do about it i can try and pray i can try and meditate i can try and uh, work out but it's not it's not enough because it's not the thing that i want like there's a specific maybe i could be called i don't know um you know about this one or this certain way of what i want mm-hmm. like how i view it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I find that I've lost a lot of living in the moment sort yeah. of situations. You know because I'm there and I'm like already okay. Uh, You're there and not there. I'm there but I'm not mm-hmm. there. So like for example like on Sundays a friend of mine I think has invited has asked me if we could go and uh we could go for a drive in in our, our other friend's car. So he just bought a car recently mm. and uh, the guys like I want to test it on an open road 
Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, let's go for a drive. That's mm-hmm. on Sunday. Like, let's go and have some nyama, come back. I'm like, damn, so that sounds like a good plan. But I'm like, damn, let me look at my bank account. I can't do much. Damn, 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 damn. We're in a long, we're in a long weekend now. Mm-hmm. It's five days. Uh, majority of the friends that I'm, I hang out with have plans. Mm-hmm. Some are out of town. Mm-hmm. Some are leaving town. Uh, and uh, I don't have a plan. You know? So I'm like, what next? What do I do? Like, I only have the enough to keep me mm-hmm. moving today, tomorrow. Yeah. The kind basics. of situation. That's my basics. Yeah. And even getting those basics are... It's proven difficult. Uh, and now if I step into another conversation about like dating, mm. you know, a lot of the time I feel like, damn, man, do I deserve maybe to even be with someone romantically? Yeah. Because it's not just about vibes and inshallah. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not about vibes and inshallah, you know. It's, uh, I have, I'm, I don't know, like I feel like I'm, I don't know if I'm able to contribute you know, do I have, can I take this person on a date? Yeah. Can mm-hmm. I buy them a gift? I know it's not just about gifts dates and, and gifts. gifts, but it's also like, okay, can we just go, sa- even the not thing for like, yeah. you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, you like, okay, if I give this 200 up, what do I have left? Like, I'm always, so I can't live in the moment because I'm panicking about the very little finances I have. And then you know you do that thing of your applying for jobs, applying for jobs. Yeah, that's a that's a pain. It's a painful season. It's applying a painful, for yeah. jobs, and, it, and ah. it's so it's been a thing for before COVID. There's a lot of other stuff happening, ah. like in my life generally, mm-hmm. yeah. and then COVID came and then just added. Okay. So I was like, I my guy, God, like <laughs> when is, oh, yeah. <laughs> when do you cut the cord? Yeah. <laughs> the umbilical cord is this is attached it's for too crazy, long. Yeah. Ah, so anyway, that was <laughs> that's my story. Uh, yeah. We can see my that we can see on that as we take a break. Yeah, before we take a break, mm. uh, just just go through the season, man. Uh, I think that not yeah. feeling enough. It's it's sometimes we have different metri- different ways of measuring ourselves. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. and it's very hard to change those metrics. So mm-hmm. just go through that path as long as. You can be in that space and uh, be have a conversation. You just try and exist in those spaces. If it's the spaces that you value and are important for you and to you. Let's take a short break. Ooh. We will be right back. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Watch, like, share, and subscribe. What's up, people? Welcome back to the Naked Ego podcast. We were talking about uh, when, the last time when, when was the last time we felt not enough? Yeah, felt like we weren't enough. Yeah, and uh, from our feedback, it's it's pretty much a common occurrence in our life, uh, especially in our adult life. In our adult life, yes. Yeah, yes. we're not up when we feel we're just not up to par with. Certain things, certain people, things, yes. certain events. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think it's just a thing that happens. Even the people who have it or who seemingly have it all, mm. be it um, your fame, mm. your power, your mm. wealth, mm. Mm. your assets, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure those people also go through moments yeah. where they don't feel like we'll do. they are enough. So, mm. like, maybe what I'd now bring up is what, what does it feel? to be enough <laughs> yeah even if you can't get it to a hundred or whatever but what does it feel to to be, to be enough what does that look like in your life i would say accepting situ- certain situations as they are mm-hmm. um i've been applying for jobs mm-hmm. and like edgar said sometimes you don't you don't even get a regret okay. So <laughs> you don't even get the guy telling you we, we regret to in, we received your application uh-huh. but we regret to inform you. Silence. So and I no, I don't like that. So what I do is mm. not necessarily with only job applications, but yeah. when it's something that I can't control or 
have a way to a solution, I tell myself that better is coming. That's my go-to mm -hmm. thing when I'm feeling down. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the your network, your your people who hold you down when when you're unable to hold yourself down. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have someone who can first make you accountable for your actions, keep you in check? Do you have someone when, let's say I call Bill, Bill, today I'm not feeling 100, and they just listen to you with no judgment. Um, associate yourselves with people who uplift you, not necessarily financially, but psychologically, emotionally, mm. even spiritually. Mm. Um, have have a safe space for yourself mm -hmm. that is you personally me as Christine as an individual alone not with people mm -hmm. somewhere you can just sit and think and let it all out um, because after my experience my 2016 experience mm -hmm. um, I came to learn how to be alone not lonely, but alone. Um, you learn to deal with situations by yourself and then how you can also bring, bring them out to other people so that you can get the assistance you need. You judge, you judge the situation as it comes. Mm. Also, um, like I said, be patient with yourself. And as much as you've made many mistakes, learn to forgive yourself because we are not perfect. Mm. We'll definitely do, do. We'll definitely make mistakes, and we'll be judged for those mistakes, regardless of whether the person knows that the choices you you had or didn't have at mm. that point. Mm. So, give yourself grace to be an imperfect human, but also do it in a positive manner. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll ask the question again. What does it feel or look like when you say you are enough? I think what does, to yeah, yeah. What does enough look like to you? To me, enough looks like um, when I get to when I get to a point where I can provide unto myself those things that uh, different environments, mm -hmm. where different people, different seasons demand or require from me uh, for example if i want to do a road trip with my friends to mombasa uh, feeling enough is getting to a point where i can provide myself with what i need when i get to mombasa yeah it, it it's not entirely what i need mm. it's also what i want because sometimes <laughs> what we want outweighs what we need. What you need. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. So when I get to those spaces and I can provide them to myself with those things, when um, I'm with my girlfriend and uh, I feel like I can be there for her emotionally, uh, be present in the journey, especially mm. now for us, now that you're waiting a baby. Mm. Um, am I preparing? Uh, am I being involved? Uh, am I interested? Mm. Yeah, being, being, walking with her through, uh, through the journey. And also being there uh, to just uh, make her feel better. Mm. Uh, women, when they are pregnant, sometimes they, they, have, they have low self-esteem. Yes. So am I there to cheer her up and tell her how amazing she looks, how beautiful she is, uh, even with the baby bump. Uh, mm, mm. I desire you. Mm. I want mm. you. You turn me on. Mm. Those things, am I there to provide her? Mm. Uh, in my family, for example, like in my situation, I have my small sister with me at my place. Mm. Do I have what it takes to empower her to go out there and also have an equal chance in terms of fighting for job opportunities? Mm. Uh, do I have something that I can impact or 
put into her in terms of information, knowledge. Mm. What do I have to pass on to her? Um, yeah, so it's me being in different spaces in different seasons and being able to give unto myself what, that, what I need or what I want to feel enough. Mm. Like, for example, in the space that I am in right now where people are measuring people in different seasons, yeah. I can ask myself, okay, do I have the funds to buy that fancy car that will make me fit in? Okay, I don't have. Or maybe I have, but my priorities are el somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I feel like the priorities are right, I need to feel enough from the fact that these are the decisions that I've made in this season, and this is what I choose to prioritize. Maybe later on, I'll buy that big car. Mm. Or maybe later on, I'll try and dress fancier. I'll try and have a Zara suit. And maybe next time, I'll try and wear... Uh, ties, I'll try and wear shirts some more. Mm. Uh, it's just me being there for myself and uh, mm. gifting myself and providing unto myself. That's mm. for me, especially being a modern man, that's what it feels like being enough. Okay. I'd like to throw on to especially the two guys and also Tintin. Yeah. Um, when you look at the the general sense of how we've been brought up, of course, there's there are some things that we've been trying to fight mm -hmm. to right. So, like for instance, as a man, Bill, now you're expecting a kid, and as a man, Jamlek, now at where you're at a point where you're out of a job, mm. and it's affecting you in many different ways. Yeah, what? What has that done to you in the sense of you feeling enough and the desire you have to say that I have this and that, now I am enough? Not in the general sense for, for our own definition, but now something that you've learned through social conditioning and you still feel like it's weighing on you. That makes you feel like I'm not enough. It makes me feel like I'm not maybe enough. Have you understood this question? I think I have. Mm -hmm. So like, what, what has me my, understand. what my current situation, mm -hmm. um, basically like this, in terms of my desire to be enough, mm -hmm. what my personal current situation has done to me, you know, um, how it has weighed on, you know, either it is on my mind or my emotions or my spirit mm -hmm. in my journey towards wanting to be enough. Yes. Uh, so I'll answer that is... And how, eh. how, how your character that has been built through social conditioning, like, uh -huh. oh, I'm a man, they expect this from me, they expect that from yes. me, and because of that, that I cannot do, I, I sort of don't feel enough. Now you're getting it. I get you. Yeah. There's, there's your own definition of, okay, if me as Bill Cassandra does this, this and that, I feel like I will mm -hmm. be enough. So it's very specific to you rather than, or rather to, to me or you or to mm -hmm. Tintin, rather than the society one, you know, because your situation is probably very different from mine. Yeah, your situation is also very different from mine. Yes. Okay, so... Um, maybe maybe I'm tired, but I'm not understanding <laughs> the question. I, uh, let me, let me... Uh, let me try okay, and you, yes, answer me, him. Yes, and then probably then you can catch up. Pick up. Yeah. Um, social conditioning. For me, I think I've sidebar, uh, on sidebar I've told you guys that I grew up a lot faster than I should have. Mm -hmm. I was exposed to certain things as a child that I shouldn't have at all. And it forced me to grow up when I didn't. It was not... It was not uh, I think I consciously did. I just mm -hmm. found myself in that situation. Mm -hmm. And I had no control over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had no control over... I don't want to grow up now. It was the way, it, the way things were packaged back then. Growing up was the thing I, I felt like I had... I found myself doing. And then later on, it's something I felt like... Or thought like I had to do. In order to survive. And growing up, what that was, was uh, just... 
me wanting uh, a home to be our home to be perfect my parents getting along my sister and I getting along then mm-hmm. I and then f- the four of us as a family getting along mm-hmm. at some point go through school work hard pass my exams go to uni pass my exams get a job start making money and with making money comes uh being able to pay my bills independently so financial stability with financial stability you are able to measure of success comes with things like a car piece of land uh um building a house mm-hmm. um getting married getting kids you as a man providing and when you are able to do those things even you go to the extent of uh building a house in ushago mm-hmm. Now that's also another measure of success, you know, and uh, you being able to do that, you'd have some sta- some standing in society. People would look at you and they'd be like, "Hey, you're that guy. You are enough to us." Mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, so specific to me now, not the society, even if the society's ways uh, have had an influence over my life. Like I said. It's been one thing after another. It's been going growing up in a, a very difficult home. Uh and this had a lot of our resources being controlled. Mm-hmm. Especially in the times when for example uh my dad was financially stable. There was still a lack of empowerment transferred to us. His wife myself my sister so if you come to our house for example a lot of the the main house now a lot of the things you see like trophies um pictures and stuff like that this is successes of my father mm-hmm. it's not a f- it's not family success i'm yet to have this conversation with him but it's family success now they go to a point where he was able to empower me i was told to go to school i went to school i followed the instruction I went to and I did my bachelor's I got my bachelor's degree. I was told to go for my master's I got my master. I even had the privilege of going out of the country to do my master's. But a lot of people don't understand that when I went there I had a financially it was tough, but I didn't show it. I went and I just I just was able to sail through. I broke down in my house. I could stay alone. I broke down in my house a lot of times and I think maybe one or two people other than who knew how much I was actually sinking. But somehow I made it out I got my degree I came back to Kenya. Now when I came back to Kenya my dad was in the most like he was in a he was in the perfect spot to know people who are recruiting especially with the degree that I did mm-hmm. who were in government. And I remember thinking he was meant to hand me the job. He was meant to because this is how the world works. It's a fact. If you ha- if you know a recruiter personally mm-hmm. that's your way in period. and i think that if he put in uh a little bit more effort in getting those recruiters to 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 not just look at my cv but to grant me a chance to interview mm-hmm. i would have done it so i didn't get those chances for his specific reasons and i wish he ran those reasons through like me for example i would have given him my perspective but that didn't happen So now in my thing of what that has done to me is in my friendships I feel like for a long time for me to feel for me to uh at the time for me to feel enough what I used to do was I used to be present for everyone. Mm-hmm. I used to drop everything I used to do to sacrifice time and energy and space for other people and I felt that if I did it because I lacked it at home I would get it from those outside my home. Mm-hmm. But then what had and and I made some very good friends doing that. Those are sense of fulfillment for a while. But I was doing it to cover the thing I wasn't getting at home. The thing I was lacking at home. That's why I was doing what I was doing. The blessing in disguise is yes, I met quite a number of people, but the thing is not all of them poured into me as much as I poured into them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They didn't think I needed to be poured into. Poured into mm. Yeah. So a lot of time I didn't get questions of by the way are you okay? Is everything fine? So maybe it was the way I used to portray myself. I don't know. But also you know along for a long time friendships are not those ones for by the way be lukosawa. 
is everything okay? Mm-hmm. Are you okay? How are you feeling this morning? And stuff like that. Like, what's going on in your life? Mm-hmm. It's just me assuming that because of what I see, let's say, on social media, ah, Bill is good. Mm-hmm. So, now, um, feeling enough probably would be being able to be in my friendships, relationship, um, and, and, and uh, any other, like even if I'm working, um, being able to be in those settings and live in the moment. I calculate far too much for my own good. But I calculate because that's, that's what home was about. Mm-hmm. Home, home situation forced me to calculate. I don't enjoy calculating, but it's a thing I know to do. So someone will easily come and tell me, but then don't calculate. And I'm like, I, bro, I where's the switch? I would, I would flick it a thousand times. As long as it tries to go and flip on, I always go and switch it off. But it's not, that's not how it works. You know? So the, for me, feeling enough would be being able to live in the moment, mm-hmm. in, every, in anything and everything that I do. Wake up in the morning and not, and not worry too much. But I don't know how to shut that off. I'm still, I'm still learning how to do that. You know, how to not worry, how to live without a lot of anxiety. Because my anxiety is not nerves. My anxiety has very physical manifestations where there are days, weeks, I'm down. There are months, I'm down. And I don't know how to explain it to people. Enough would be... And you see, you've met, whatever, with everything I've said, it's not necessarily like getting the high-flying job and buying the car, buying mm-hmm. the house. That doesn't matter to me. But if I'm just financially stable to live a comfortable life, so comfortable for me is not rich, mm-hmm. having five cars, three houses, apartment buildings in Mejenga Mahali, Nikona Manyamba, Mama at Manyamba, Mashambas Jiwa, P. Sijanyamba, Bade. Sijanyamba. You know? So mine is not that. For a lot of, I think for a lot of times you find that people, for, even when guys are reading people's CVs or even neology sometimes, mm-hmm. enough was how much they, how many jobs they had, how many managerial positions mm-hmm. they had. If they got a chance to be an MD or a CEO, that they were able to build, you don't know what building here. They were able to have, you don't know what, how many um, pieces of land and cars and all that. Or how long your CV is. <laughs> I don't care for that. Mine is how much can I point to the world to make a change? Mm-hmm. That I'd feel enough because I feel with, with what I've gone through in my life, my purpose is serving community. My purpose is in serving community. But I need to, I need to structure it in a way where I don't serve community uh, and forget Yourself. me. I don't get lost in other people that I forget myself. Or I get lost in other people that I forget I have a girlfriend. Or I have even, let's say, a wife. I have kids. Because you fight a lot of times people who, let's say, do like public service jobs. Mm. Politicians, for example. Mm. Politicians are all about the people. But the people that they forget are those ones in their house. Like, mm, yeah. my mom always says this. Charity begins at home. And I believe in that. For me to be able to go even out there and serve that community and do a podcast, and I have to start at home. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know how. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. If I'm, let's say, a, in a relationship with someone, it's, it's, it's how can I feel like, because um, I'm going through a lot of phases in terms of um, this, this life situation that, I'm, let's say, I'm in now, but despite all that, I'm working on healing. Mm-hmm. So there are days I'll wake up, let's say, for example, in the middle of the night, and I, I found myself at times where I've had like a nightmare. And I've woken in the middle. I've woken up in the middle of the night, and I'm screaming. But it's not enough because of where I stay in the SQ. It's not loud enough for people from the my folks house. in the main house to hear, so they don't know. Mm. So in the morning, let's be morning, 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 and we move on with life. Mm. But it's if let's say I'm with someone, mm. it's it's how do we take care of that situation? Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm taking care of myself, but I feel like it would be good sometimes to have someone support that process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because man, I've done so much. I've taken care of so many people and I feel like, bro, can someone just... I'm not saying I'll put all, all of my weight on you. No. Yeah. It's... 
basically just a little said it could be back dogo to sometimes it could be through your words sometimes it could be through your actions most times i think for me i am more of an action oriented mm-hmm. person so come and continuously do it then i'll believe it you know because I've, i've people have told me so many things and they've fallen back on those promises so yeah. i think enough for me i don't know if i've and i've answered very well okay yeah. okay yeah i so don't I think know if bill still, uh, still doesn't understand <laughs> i don't know if you've understood no, i still don't understand <laughs> 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 yeah so enough for me would just be um how much have i uh, am i able to live in the moment am i able to not have too much anxiety and if i have a stressor or a worry how can i manage that without catastrophizing catastrophizing yes without catastrophizing because i find my subconscious i subconsciously catastrophize because that's what our home was Mm-hmm. yeah it would happen and then mm-hmm. boom 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 it just it's just thrown away thrown away thrown away think about it this way bill for you to feel enough there has to be some some principle or some Metrics. some values that are guiding your life so there's there was a time where for him to feel enough it was and the under, the underlying factors that made him feel enough were the social conditions that mm were just imposed on him growing up in in just the nairobi culture so like he's at a point where he knows better and what he thought was enough has now changed yeah that's that's yeah. basically yeah I was it's, it's changed the question. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah it's so, no longer about other people now i'm, I'm like Ed, it's about me yeah. but now since it's i've never been asked questions about me mm-hmm. You know it's like edgar are you okay do you need anything uh, you need so now i'm like okay i'm also asking myself those questions uh-huh. but i'd like to be around i'd like to be around people uh-huh. who help in that sort of situation because mm. i can't mm. do it all by myself before i used to think i could but no <laughs> can't. so so basically you're asking um how feeling enough felt like to an an informed mm. self of me yes mm. And now what feeling enough feels like to me now now moving forward okay i think in the past actually you've already answered the now already, because you gave us yes, the situation given, mm, yes oh yeah, right yeah. now there's that i think the past you. so the i think uh, yeah i think the uninformed version of myself feeling enough was more of fitting in if mm. you did everything mm. to fit in it made me feel enough mm. And uh, if I existed in spaces where I wouldn't be pointed out on certain things mm. that I lacked or I struggled with, mm. it would make me feel enough. Mm. Uh, at a job, for example, if uh, I'm driving a certain car, I'm, I'm making a certain amount of money, mm. I live in a certain neighborhood, I'm shopping in certain shops. Mm. I'm walking around with certain type of women. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm with certain crowds of people even from the male friends like mm. let's say for example uh do I have a close connection with Kenyatta for example. Yes. Yeah, now this is a, a public figure, yes. somebody mm. who's looked up to somebody who's respected in the society like mm. now for example in my spaces yeah. do i have any affiliation or connections to those people that's those are some of the things that made me feel enough uh do i say yes to most of the requests that yes, come ma'am. around mm. without really paying attention and even querying those questions mm. those favors so i think top of my head that's what felt enough okay. back then okay Yeah. Awesome. Tintin? Oh, you, you have a different question. Nope, nope, nope. That was all for me, man. Anything you want to add? Mm-hmm. What felt enough for me in the past? Mm. It's basically what both of you have said. Mm. Fitting in, being the Christian that other people wanted as as opposed to being my tr- my true version. Mm. Um doing what you were told. Um, and if you do a mistake the remedy that you're given is you follow it to the latter um, also 
not putting yourself first, if I can put it that way. Rather, um, carrying the opinions of others and um, doing it their way, even if you don't feel that it's right to you. That is what I used to do in the past. Mm. Um, but now it's different. I analyze before I decide to move forward mm. with anything. Yeah. Yeah. That mm. analysis kind of thing. Even yes. me, uh, that's <laughs> why I'm at now. Mm. Like I, I'll analyze before I do anything. Uh, mm. Because before it was just on the spot decision yes, and you same. move and, you're, and you feel like, yeah, I'm justified to just do whatever. Mm. But now it's like, hey, wait. And then now, even now, <laughs> a big thing I'm learning is uh, I, for me to feel enough, I think one big thing would be to know if I'm a good friend to others. Yes. Two, if I do hurt you, if I do anger you, if I do make you sad, I, I, I would love to be told. I would love, just, I mean, of course, in a, in a proactive, respectful way, mm -hmm. just, I invite the conversation to be told that kuna kitu hapo hujafanya poa. Then let's talk about it. Because I I'm not walking around thinking that I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm far from that. So it's if I've if I've done something or said something that has not rubbed off the right way with someone I'd love to be told so that I know when to say sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of what I've been through as Edgar, it doesn't mean that I can't hurt another person, I can't anger or, mm. or make someone sad. I can. But it's like, I'm in, a f I'm in a situation where now I can be told. And then now for me, it's that thing for fitting in, even like with this, ex what we're talking about before, about like my friends and me not having a job mm. and stuff like that. Mm. My enough is just, I think for me to, the, the, the dream is to, to get the job not necessarily to be able to sit with my friends on the same table and talk mm. but it's just that if i'm there mm. i'll be able to <sighs> live in the, even if i'm not telling them about my job but i'm just there and i'm i'm existing comfortably mm -hmm. and and these mark you this is not for them this is for you this yes. is for me this not is for your them. journey yeah. so this is for me. if they are listening this has got nothing to do with them yeah it's nothing to do with them this, this is, is just, just for me yeah, yeah. just so that when i'm yeah. there i'm i'm comfortable i'm yeah. good yeah. Oh, I think with that we can wrap it up. Yeah. As always, uh, this is a platform where men and women are willing to strip down their ego and be authentic and vulnerable while they share their story. This is the Naked Ego Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace out. Watch, like, share, subscribe. Click on the, <laughs> click on the bell button. Click on the <laughs>